I learned of the gift from the Maasai in April, I think it was, uh, after the 9-11 event. And I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, I still do. I was walking to my front door early morning BC, that's before coffee in my house. Um, I had a mug, nothing in it yet. And um, I opened the door and there was my New York Times. And there was a, a compelling picture. For one thing, it was very bright, lots of reds. And then it spoke of um, some occurrence that had happened in Kenya related somehow to the 9-11 attack. So I go into the kitchen, I pour my cup of coffee, I sit down, and I start to read. And I'm first, of course, captured by the image. I'm a, I'm a visual person. And so there were Maasai women, and they were holding this sign written in the most exquisite manner. It said, we send these cows to help you, 9-11 tragedy. And I thought, what is this? So I start reading and I find out that the story is one of a young man, a Maasai, who is, was in New York City when the towers fell, who returned to his tribe in Kenya. It's a little more complicated than that, but this is truncated. Tells them the story of what happened to us. They had seen Americans as people who had cared for him while he was here. He'd lived with many American families while he was at Stanford and so forth. And one of the chiefs said, what can we do to help these poor people? And it was decided among the elders and the tribe that they would give um, these cows to us. It would be uh, 14 cows in a, from a tribe of 500 or so people. This is like this is like the U.S. giving away a couple of states. Uh, this is their wealth. They are they. If you know anything about the Maasai, they have an incredible history. They are uh, they're a wandering tribe. Um, I just couldn't believe it. I, I, it was such a strange and wonderful story. The first to crawl out of that, the ashes, the detritus of that terrible event. And, but like all artists, I wasn't ready to write about it. And people weren't making music. They, they weren't writing poems. They weren't doing anything. It's like you're stepping on holy ground. You know, you just, it's not the time. So some years passed and then I was offered a, a, a Carson McCullough, McCullers Fellowship in South Georgia. And uh, I could only go for a short time. I had, still had children at home. And I went down there to write an entirely different book. And while I stayed, and you actually stay in, in Carson's house. Uh, and this is the story that came from there. And I'd done a lot of research in the interim, of course. Um, and, and I'd interviewed a lot of people and eventually found the young man, uh, Wilson uh, Kameli Nyoma, and asked his permission to tell the story because it felt like that was important and respectful. And I'm not that nice, but you know, this one, I was pretty sure. There was Dante's seventh circle of somewhere that you went to if you didn't check, <laughs> didn't check with Camelli about this story. And I said, would you like to write? He said, no, I, I, I don't feel like I can, but um, he read it and he, he agreed to it and it seemed to have meant a great deal to him. And to this day, a portion of those books uh, go to the tribe.